Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is the last day of the November League Code Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem, the skyline problem. Okay. Uh, so given the location of heights, we turn the outline. Okay, wow. This is like really, really good problem. There's a lot of like, the language is really weird. It's very, uh, is it like an old school problem or something? But, okay. But the way that I usually solve these is probably going to be with sweep line. So let's kind of take a quick look into the the inputs. Um, so, okay. So it's going to be the length, the left and the right, and then the height. Okay. So for example, we're giving these inputs. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so th that's the way that I usually solve it is that I put them as um as a sweep line event. And and then we just have to figure out how to interpret this, right? So let, let's do something naive first and then we'll figure out if optimizations is needed and stuff like that. N is N is about ten thousand, so sweep line. I sh I'm relatively sure it'll be okay. Um, it will be like N log N or something. But okay, so for left, right, height in building, so that's the input that we're given, right? Um, okay, so yeah, so now let, let's just have defense. And the reason why I say that is it's going to be a sweep line algorithm just to kind of explain it really shortly. And I, I usually record and solve these lives, so if I'm explaining them in a weird way, let me know. But I am explaining them as I think through the problem, so hopefully my thought process will be helpful. Uh, you could feel free to watch in 2x or on 1.5x or something like that or speed for it. But basically, you can kind of see that, you know, all we care about is that if we sweep from left to right, um, certain things happen and we just have to kind of keep track of the height the highest point at every one and to pop things off as we go along right okay so then so what are we trying to represent right well when uh and we could do do things in a, a number of ways but the way that i would put it is just we have a defense uh we let's that start at the left event and then a building of height and then sometimes i don't do this sometimes i make it implicit sometimes i i you know you can play around with frags but this time for these for learning i'm gonna uh use some frags or enums if you will uh and, and maybe like fake enums to kind of help us do this and i'll just go a new building yeah so let's just do new Building is equal to Z zero, and then, uh, and then we move building is equal to one. Maybe go add, say, so it's more consistent the language. And we also want to we we move it at maybe right building at height, right? So those are our 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 events. Um, I I am going to take a quick second look. Um, usually we want to think about when we do these sweep lines and these events, we want to think about whether these are inclusive or exclusive on the left and the right. So that's what I'm going to take a look now. Um, so right now our, our sub so I is inclusive and the, the way that we, I think about whether to make them inclusive or exclusive is if two, if two events happen at the same time, uh, but they have opposite, um, you know, let's say we have an add building and a remove building at the same time. What happens, right? Well, the add building, um, well, the remove building should come first because um, hmm, let's see. Actually, should it? Let me take a quick think. Um, I guess they, because mm, because right now what I'm thinking is whether you know and that that order may be matter depending on the height of the thing so that makes it a little bit tricky 
but we should definitely remove first. Yeah, we should definitely remove the building first in this case. Um, so I think this is okay. We, then we can keep it inclusive. Um, okay. And then now we... I think the tricky thing is trying to figure out trying to figure out how to merge events, if you will. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to think about now is if you have like a set of events, how do we process them together, right? Um, and that's okay, maybe. maybe. Maybe we could process them in different ways, actually. Um, Yeah, maybe actually I, I I'm usually that's just how I structure it, but I, I might change it a little bit just to kind of um you know, and this is an implementation part. I think like in terms of algorithm it's still the same, which is that you know, you, you put these events in different uh vertical points and then you just sweep left and right, right? But we are trying to handle how to merge them together. And I think the easy way for me to do that actually is um let's see. It's just, okay. So mm -hmm, let's just say we have a unique event, oops, caps lock, is equal to, let's say a set, uh, and we want to process, you know, let's just say that we want to make sure we process when left happens and the right happens. And then now our actual event will have Basically, this is just mapping, um, mapping a vertical point to events. So then now we can just do them all together and merge them. So here, so then now events sub left, we append this add building message and append sub right. And all this is something new to me. So if you watch me and you, you know maybe I am uh, explaining it in a not straightforward way, then I apologize. But this is the way that I think about how I structure the events given how I want to do it, which is that, okay, these are the the events that we want to process. We want to make it a set because obviously we don't need to process the same event multiple times. And then now we, we want to put all the uh, events together at a certain height so that when we process them, we'll be okay. So then now, um, okay. So now let's say we have all the events together and and now we want to process them. So we want to get, we want to convert this into a list and we want to sort it. And then now we just for, you know, let's just say point maybe for X maybe. Um, is this the X or the Y? I guess this is the X and height is the Y, right? So yeah, for X is in this. Now you can look at each event. And for me, uh, I'm going to do a one encounter of the of everything is that's in the. Hmm, how do I want to do this? There are a couple of ways to do it. Um, you could do things in a heap. Uh, I guess that's what I'm going to do because I want a max heap to keep track of the. Oh, actually, no, we don't want to. Hmm. We don't want to keep track of the max element in there, but we want to be able to remove items from inside so the heap wouldn't work there. Um, basically, we want something that's like a set, but but able to give us the largest element um, as we add and remove stuff. Uh, I guess a sorted list may be okay. Let me double. And there are a couple of data structures that does this in Java. Maybe I would, oh, sorry, in C++, I might use um, just regular set, to be honest. But in Python, a set doesn't have that ordering. So, uh, or a regular, not, it doesn't have to be a set. It will be, it'll be a multi-set, actually. But yeah, but in Python, I think the thing that's closest to that is a sorted list. So just making sure I get to, I always forget which... Um, which header that we have to import for sorted list. 
and then now and this is a little bit uh intense um to be honest mm, yeah and i think depending on your language it may be a little bit easier but uh but yeah but let's just say you know in this sorted list is just what we have and and yeah so okay so basically it, why i use sorted list is that it, it gives me three functions as an api it gives me an add item a remove item and and the get max uh, not directly but i mean it's that is something that i'm able to do it and it's able to do the add and the remove in eh, lock of end time and and get max in all of one i think so so this is why i'm using sorted list in other uh languages uh different data structure may give you that performance so yeah so let's just say this is the cur current height list um, or current heights maybe as you go to sorted list and then now as we process this we just have to kind of keep track of the current heights um by looking at the events right so now this is these are the events in it so for event in this event dictionary list um and actually for event there's um and the the event and then the height right and if event is equal to add building we add it to the current heights so yeah so current heights oops oops can type height dot add of uh height else well only other else else is if it's remove building so that's remove it from height and after we processed all this stuff um now we could get the current height at the x so so yeah so now the current x is equal to so now our pairing is x and then the current height the largest element or if, it, if the length is zero then that means that the largest element is zero so actually maybe we could add zero in here i don't know if that's that makes it easier uh, i mean that does make it easier so that's but i don't know if that messes something else up depending on what the inputs are but it should be okay i think uh so given this this is the, um i'm just trying to look at the output implement uh just in up, uh, output format so now we can append uh this as a list apparently and then that's it oops huh. um and I'll, I'll i'll definitely explain this oh did i'm current heights I'll definitely explain this in a quick while, including the complexity and stuff like that. This, this is good. I can't even tell. Um, are there more inputs? Eh, okay, maybe, may but um, I don't know if these are valid inputs, so let's take a look. Okay, looks good. Uh, let's give it a submit. Ooh maybe i misunderstood this but yeah but still the general idea is that basically as you go left and right you keep track of all the heights that is in the current list and then you just try to get the maximum height that is possible as you kind of scan from left to right and that's what we keep track of uh but it seems like we got a wrong answer here uh ooh. huh so it seems like I did I did not dedupe the previous two points of this different height. Um, that's it seems like a easy fix, but I am trying to think about why that is. So three to seven is fifteen. That's true. Oh, I I add trigger points, but then that's just me being silly. Uh, don't. Hmm. Well, this is the input, so I actually just uh, or like this is literally. I mean, that, that's what I don't like about this is that they give you the expected answer, but they did, oh, I guess I could have clicked on show there. That's my fault, actually. That's totally 100% my fault. I do not blame anyone by myself. Uh, I just, do I, I'm just used to the other format where they tell you whether they're the same already. 
maybe I'm thinking of another judge. But in any case, but this is easy. Uh, I just missed a case, which is that um, an event can happen, for example, here, and the event happens at five, but it doesn't increase the height or low. Yeah, it doesn't increase or lower the height. It stays at 15, so actually we should not have output this. So, and that's an easy fix. We only append, um, which is that if results, if the length of results is greater than zero and results, uh, uh, the last element, the height is different. Uh, the height is different from the current height. That means that the height has changed. And you can measure this in a couple of ways. It's just that I totally forgot about this case. Or you could write this in a couple of ways, but I totally forgot about this case. Um, hmm. Oh, uh, is this, a, this is, this should be if this is zero or this. Yeah. Because if this is zero, uh, if, if the length of the result is zero, this would never append, which is why we don't have anything. But okay. Uh, okay, now that we actually click on show div, it doesn't have any difference. Let's actually submit it this time. Uh, and hopefully it looks good. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, just a silly mistake on my part. But the algorithm is right, even though it took... And I definitely do not usually write it this way. And that's why I think it's important to understand the logic behind how you do things. Then, you know, like I don't have template for this. This is not the way I usually write it. Everything is, you saw me do right now, today, is me doing it live. Um, and changing it live, which, you know, maybe a little bit shaky, right? But, but yeah, so what is the complexity for this? Well, uh, this is going to be linear. The, the major thing is going to be uh, sorting the unique events and then also keeping things in a sorted list. So sorting the events is obviously going to be n log n, and we have at, at, at most n events. And then keeping things in a sorted list, well, each original height will only be added and removed from this current height once. So if you do the math that way, because there are n items and each of them will be added or removed, well, n removed, I guess, actually, uh, once. Or So it's going to take log n for each of those items. So in total, it's going to be n log n as well. So this entire algorithm is going to be n log n um, time and all of n space because, well, we have sets, we have, we have to return the results and so forth. Um, but yeah, I think this is the st most straightforward way that I like to explain it. Actually, I don't know if the inputs are already sorted. The inputs are already sorted. Maybe you could do things, uh, or it's already sorted by the left. So you can maybe do things with a stack to make it all of n or something like that, I think, actually. Um, yeah, so you could maybe do something like that, but I think, I, I don't know, I didn't think it through that way, and it's only about 20 minutes in. But this is the way that I like to think about these kind of problems, because with this mental uh, idea of this algorithm, which is n log n, which is fast enough for most cases, uh, or, you know, it's definitely fast enough for competitive programming, It's and you could kind of separate out the parts in a way that is very easy to understand. Uh, and having easy to understand algorithm is a key part of implementing it in a um, correctly the first time though I, I made a mistake so as I say that but the invariant is easier to find because in here uh, every loop for every event um, after we go for all the events of the building uh, we have the list of current heights in a list of current heights in current heights um, so so that allow us to kind of append the results as it, uh, afterwards um, cool that's all I have for this poem. Uh, it's a fun end of the month. I hope y'all join me for December. And let me know what you think. I will talk to you next month, uh, which is tomorrow. Bye-bye.